ICE arrests made around Wisconsin, Sheboygan man to be sentenced for child pornography, high-speed chase leads to arrest in Manitowoc County. These stories and more coming up on Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS-TV, news content provided by WHBL. Hello, I'm Maddie Fister, and this is Community News Review for Monday, September 24, 2018. A Sheboygan man who pleaded no contest to felony charge of possessing child pornography appears in court for sentencing today. Dominic Mann was arrested in November of last year after detectives got a tip from National Center for Missing and Exploited Children about an image that they had obtained with two little girls who were unclothed. The criminal complaint says that when they went to Mann's house, he admitted to looking at child pornography and said that he had a few hundred images on his computer and cell phone. The state is recommending three years in prison and 10 years of supervision. Governor Scott Walker was in Appleton on Thursday to unveil a proposal to provide a new child care tax credit. At Mount Olive Lutheran Church on Appleton's north side Thursday, he said his plan would mirror the federal tax credit and be in addition to it. The Republican governor said families would be eligible for up to $3,000 per child or $6,000 for multiple kids. He said the amount would be based on income, and the governor used a family with two parents and two children paying $8,000 a year in taxes as an example. He said that family would be making about $50,000 a year. He says that they would be eligible for up to $1,200 a year. He says the average family would be about $500 back. Walker said for some families, the cost of child care is a barrier for a parent to return to work. Governor is seeking a third term in November's elections, and he faces Democrat State Superintendent of Public Instruction, Tony Evers. A plea hearing is scheduled for Monday today for the man charged after his car wound up in the Pigeon River near Sheboygan Falls in March. Police say Andrew Christian was driving the Ford Focus south on Range Line Road near Shamrock Road early that morning. Court documents say he was speeding, failed to negotiate a curve, hit some trees, and ended up in the Pigeon River. Tyler Leacher was a in the car with him and was airlifted to Theta Care in Nina to be treated for serious injuries. Deputies say Christian had an alcohol in his system and tried walking away after the crash. He is facing over 20 years in prison if he is found guilty. Sheboygan police have identified the people who died in that fatal crash at 14th and Pennsylvania Avenue on Tuesday afternoon. Sergeant Joel Kaczynski says in a press release that 56-year-old Daniel Wilson of Sheboygan was driving an SUV west on Pennsylvania at a high rate of speed. He failed to stop at the stoplight at 14th, hitting a car driven by 49-year-old Jana Rady of Sheboygan. Both drivers died in the crash, and the police, Sheboygan Police Accident Reconstruction Team is continuing their investigation. No one else was injured in this crash. Officials say in Columbia County are continuing to investigate a crash that left three men dead on Saturday evening. WAOW-TV reports it happened at the intersection of State Highway 129 and County Highway O in the town of Newport. Officers say a Toyota failed to yield at the right of way at the intersection and pulled out into the path of the oncoming Chevrolet. All three men inside the Toyota were pronounced dead at the scene. Two passengers in the Chevy were injured. A female was taken to, by air to UW Hospital, and another passenger was taken to St. Clair Hospital. 
Investigators say they don't believe any of the deceased passengers were wearing their seatbelts, and it is unclear if alcohol or speed were factors in the incident. A high-speed chase early Thursday morning in Manitowoc ended in a cornfield. The initial traffic stop was made around 2 a.m. on I-43 in the township of Manitowoc Rapids. The pickup truck sped off as a deputy approached and reached speeds of 105 miles per hour. The truck turned into a cornfield after a tire deflation device deflated all four tires of the vehicle and 38-year-old Stephen Meyer was taken into custody and it was discovered that he is wanted on three active warrants. The four law enforcement officers involved in the shootout with the gunmen at Middleton Software Company are being identified. Middleton Police Officers Richard O'Connor and Tyler Lothar and Dane County Sheriff's Deputies David Lambrecht and Matthew Earl exchanged a fire with Anthony Tong after he opened fire on co-workers at WTS Paradigm. The officers are on administrative leave while the shooting is investigated. Tong was wounded in the shootout and he died from his injuries a short time later. Three people were hospitalized with serious injuries and a fourth person was grazed by a bullet. A former co-worker says Tong was a quiet man who didn't socialize much with others. Tong had been with the company since April 2017 and he had a concealed carry permit revoked in South Dakota because of mental health concerns. The motive for the shooting remains unclear. Hunters are being asked to help DNR count animals this fall. Its 10th year of Deer Hunter Wildlife Survey, DNR biologist Jessica Lohr says they're not just looking for the deer counts in the woods. They want to hear all about the critters you see. Deer, badgers, bears, coyotes, if someone sees an elk in this year, or even raccoons or skunks. Lohr says deer hunters are some of the best spotters since you're spending long hours on your blind or tree stand and that makes for a great chance to see what there is to see. Find out more online at dnr.wi.gov. There have been a series of immigration and customs enforcement arrests around Wisconsin. An immigrant rights group reports that at least nine people have been detained in the Madison area. The arrest happened on Friday night without communication with the city's police department. Madison Mayor Paul Solgan said at a news conference that the arrests were contrary to city policy. The mayor also said that the Madison city officials are working to identify those who are in custody to ensure that their rights are protected. I usually identifies local police, but sometimes does not if agents believe that the local law enforcement will be uncooperative. The group said Saturday that organizers have confirmed additional arrests by ICE around Wisconsin, and several reports say there was an additional immigration enforcement action on Abbott's Fort and Colby in the Milwaukee area. And that is all we have for today. Join me again next time for another recap of our local news. From all of us at Community News Review, have a great day. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.